every asset in existence fluctuates like absolute crazy. And really the only thing we can do as people that are wanting to buy those assets is decide on which one gives us the best value at any given time. Obviously, I'm not going to be talking about price and I'm not going to be giving you financial advice in this video, but I thought it was about time we talked again about what the better value asset might be in the Alluvium ecosystem. For anyone who's unaware, we have quite a few things at our disposal. We have Alluvatars, land, and the ILV token. Now, Alluvatars are really hard to get gauge in this context, so I'm going to be talking about just the ILV token and land. Now, I'm not going to be discussing token price at all. I'm just going to be discussing land fluctuations and how that might impact the comparison between the two asset classes. For anyone who's not, is, who is not familiar with Alluvium land, basically there are these land parcels you can buy on the Alluva decks. In this case, you are seeing a lot of tier one plots of land. They sit around 500 USD. The floor is a lot more thin than I thought it was. Um, and basically they have a series of fuel sites and element sites on them. And based on the fuel sites, you will be able to generate revenue based on how much revenue is made by the Alluvium DAO when people are playing the game. 5% of this revenue will go to landholders that are creating these fuels and selling them on the market. And 95% of it will go to the people that are staking the ILV token, depending on things like how long they've staked for, how many tokens they have, and all the rest of it. But the question here is, based on how much these land plots cost, is it a better buy than the ILV token? Now, on the onset, it seems like maybe it is. A land plot is about $500 and there are only 20,000 plots available of varying tiers. That Against that, we have five, uh, 10 million ILV tokens possible, more like 9.5 million maximum at the moment. And really, you have a really crazy ratio of 9.5 million to 20,000. However, only 5% of the revenue is actually going to go to land plots. So if we even that out, it would be the equivalent of 1 million land plots up against 9.5 million ILV tokens, which is about a 9 to 1 ratio. Why this is interesting is because land, or at least tier 1 land, is worth about 400 USD at the moment, and the ILV token is currently priced at about $80 USD. Now, I don't know when you're going to watch this video. This video might come out long after I record it. So whatever the price is, ignore it. That is unimportant for the purpose of this video. And I'll be not discussing if price goes up or down and how that will affect all of this. So let's jump into the spreadsheet. Just like Alluvium, there is another AAA game building that has me extremely excited. And up until this point, they've been building in stealth. Open is a multi-mode battle royale game coming to the PC and current generation consoles in partnership with the author of Ready Player One. It will feature IPs like the DeLorean and Reebok with many more IPs to be confirmed in the future. And there are lots of items to collect and battles to be fought in the game. I personally love battle royales and it is one of my favorite genres and I cannot wait until this game comes out. Make sure to follow their X profile and watch them like a hawk. I assure you, you won't regret it. So I've just made up some wacky numbers just so I have something to work with that will allow me to analyze this and explain it properly. In this case, I've got total revenue for the game at $10 million. Now for all we know, we could get 10 million in revenue every month or every year or every two years. I don't know how well the Alluvium game is going to do as a whole, but this number is just to make it easy for us to understand the concept. Current token price, as I said, $80, and stake tokens at 5 million. That's pretty close to what it is right now, but this could change a lot in the future. It could decrease a lot if people decide they don't necessarily need to stake all their tokens, or it could increase quite a bit if the Alluvium game is really successful and people think it might be a smart idea to stake their tokens. That's anyone's guess. As for the land resource generation, this is all numbers I've done in previous videos where I've calculated exactly how much these land plots can generate based on my own land that I've built up. Now, what is interesting here is even though these numbers are quite concrete for like a late stage alluvium setup, your problem is that the tier one land might take three months longer than your tier four land to reach that stage. And so tier four would be essentially taking all of the revenue up until that period. So we're looking mostly at this end state, but you do need to consider the build up time as well. So please do not forget that. Um, as far as we can see here, 
In total, fuel tier one has about 200, uh, tier two has 450, tier three, 960, and tier four, sitting about the 2800 mark. Quite a big jump from tier three. Looks like tier three is getting a little bit screwed here, but the jumps are relatively consistent. About 100% from tier one to two, tier two to three, and then about 200% from tier three to tier four. We can also see the total plots. There are currently 12,029 plots available for tier one, 5,012 for tier two, 2,088 for tier three, um, which is a little bit higher than I would have expected, and 869 tier four plots. I mean, in the tier four plot in general, how much revenue is being distributed? 5% of that, that pool there, um, 0.297% of that is going to go to every single person the tier four plot, given they're just as competitive as everyone else, if we're in a vacuum, but maybe you're twice as good as the game as someone else, and so you'll generate twice as more than them, right? But yes, and the current prices for them are four hundred dollars for a tier one plot, eleven hundred for tier two, thirty six fifty for tier three, and ninety two hundred for a tier four plot. And here is where we get into the ROI stuff. But what's important is we go over. Just really want to quickly explain how this works. So I'm going to read this first and then explain a bit further. This compares the current land price and fuel output against the current ILV token price. As the land price moves, the APOI for land also changes. This makes assumptions about every other metric staying perfectly static for the purposes of demonstration. So even though the ILV token will be moving at all times, that will change all these numbers drastically. If the ILV token doubles, then its APY would essentially halve for the same number of revenue. And so we need to consider all those factors, but it goes the same for land, and that's what we're focusing on here. So if the land price doubles, for example, the floor goes from $400 to $800 on a tier one plot, then the APY, or the ROI in this case, would actually cut in half, and we'd go from 2.93% down to about 1.5%. And so what I'm calculating here is based on the price and based on how much revenue they would receive, given that the one revenue number is distributed to both parts of this equation, then we would see just what the ROI might look like on these different plots of land. Remembering, even though tier one is outpacing token for the static numbers right now, um, that won't always be the case, either if the tier one plot increases in value, or it takes a really long time to build up, and so tier four is going to be much higher to begin with, or the ILV token price changes, and that will change all of this. But as a static equation, this is what it looks like. Now, in the second row here, I've got 10%. All I'm calculating here is if the prices for land decreased by 10%, then what would this ROI look like? And you can see that if the tier two decreased 10%, so if we went from 1100 to like, I wanna say 1000 or $990, right? then the ROI would increase to 2.49%, which would be higher than the current token ROI as it stands. Um, now, the actual percentage number does not matter that much, okay? This might say 2.5%, but you need to consider that I've just written $10 million in revenue in there just as a random number. Whatever that is changes it. If this is $100 million, then the ROI would be 20%. If it's $1 billion, then the ROI would be 100%. You get the point. So the actual percentage number itself is irrelevant. I'm not telling you that tier one, tier two land or whatever is going to earn you 2% ROI. That's not what I'm telling you. We have no idea what that will be. What I'm telling you is that based on a given revenue, if revenue is X, your tier two is going to, uh, if it decreases 10% in value, it's going to earn you slightly more than the token would if all of the prices for land and token are static at the time. And then as we proceed, you get 20%, and still the tier three and tier four are having trouble catching up. Again, they're gonna be a lot stronger in the early months of Illusion Zero. Tier one is killing it here across the board. So tier one, apparently a very good buy right now. I, I don't recommend it myself because it's kind of a bitch to play. And if you really enjoy playing the game, maybe you don't steer away from a tier one. Tier two, a lot of fun to play. Highly recommend that. But anyways. As we get down to a 40% price decrease, you see tier four start to become highly profitable against the token and 50% decrease tier three would as well. So a tier three would be profitable at about $1,700, $1,800. Um, 
which seems to be crazy to me. I think tier three is going to be a little bit of a dark horse. And again, they build up a lot faster at the start, but a tier four needs to decrease 40%, which would put it at about five, fifty, six hundred, six thousand dollars until it's profitable against the token at current prices. Now we've seen the token at $160. If it was that right now and all the land prices were the same, then they would all be profitable against it. Okay. In the exact same way. So you need to consider all these factors before deciding to make a purchase of anything. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something and please, as always, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. How many tokens do you hold? Have you always preferred land? Right now, land looks like a pretty good buy. This is one of the first times that I've checked these stats and it's looked like that. And if you guys want more updates of this kind of video, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I really appreciate the support and it helps me get all this content out to you guys very efficiently.